What's up, y'all? It's the kid Fort Worth Fabian Bitboss Fable. I'm back with a reaction for the channel, man. I'm actually doing a reaction to the Future Planet channel. Dallas Insane City of the Future in 2020. I said 2020, 2030. So this video had caught my eye. Obviously, I'm in the DFW Metroplex. Um, a lot of people do talk about Dallas being the future of, you know, um, the U.S. in terms of being a more developed city. A lot of tech moving here. A lot of, uh, you know, uh, companies even fortune 500 is moving down here or getting established here things of that nature you know what i'm saying some people say it's the future of silicon it's the next silicon valley so i don't know about all that but i do know a lot of people are moving from a lot of states to texas you know we're only getting growing day by day um traffic um rush hours only those points in time where I, basically my experience with all that is only getting worse it's increasing you know more people just I don't know, the multitudes, the masses are moving to Texas, Dallas, Texas, man, and I think it's Dallas specifically, a lot of people going to Houston too, but man, it's crazy, we're definitely growing, so, you know, this video specifies living in Dallas, Texas, uh, many iterations since its inception, initially a trading center that was incorporated a few years before the Republic of Texas was annexed by the U.S., the city steadily grew into one of the wealthiest innovative areas in the state of Texas, be it as a leader in the cotton trade business towards the end of the 19th century or the center of America's petroleum market following discovery of oil in the 1930s or even a major manufacturing center for automobile vehicles, warcrafts. And during the World War II, Dallas has always been a vibrant and protective community that actually grew into one of the largest, most populous cities in the country and is definitely a top populated city, man. It's a great place to live, but I'm just tired of the excess, man. Too many people moving to the city. Let's go ahead and hop into this reaction. I'm excited to see kind of what they predict for the future with all the tech, you know, um, influx of individuals moving to the city as well. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, forward favorite man. It's the road to a million subscribers. Peace, love. Let's get it. Dallas has had many iterations since its inception. Initially a trading center that was incorporated a few years before the Republic of Texas was annexed by the United States of America, the city steadily grew into one of the wealthiest and innovative areas in the state of Texas. Be it as leader in the cotton trade business towards the end of the 19th century, or as the center of America's petroleum market following the discovery of oil in the 1930s, or even as a major manufacturing center for automobile vehicles and warcrafts during World War II, Dallas has always been a vibrant and productive community that eventually grew into one of the largest and most popular cities in the country. That being said, all this productivity is beginning to tell on the community as the effects of climate change are taking hold on the city. Although the issue of climate change isn't peculiar to the city, Dallas has decided to take something of a novel approach in order to battle this environmental scourge by controlling the energy utilised by its old and new buildings and the carbon emissions they may release. Let's learn what roles the city's talking about solar? buildings will play in the mission to curb the greenhouse effects of okay. climate change. Climate change, we were just talking Hello about Hello and welcome back to our channel Future Planet. Hurricane Ian, we were just talking about a climate change though. In today's video, video, we'll take a look into Dallas's insane city of the future in 2030. Before we find out more, just take a moment to subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos just like this one. Alright guys, let's dive in. The city of Dallas has always been a city bustling with activity following its establishment by John Neely Bryan in 1841 and the annexation of the Republic of Texas by the US in 1845. Although it still maintains its status as a vibrant trade town since its days as the largest producers of cotton worldwide, Dallas has been an active community since the advent of the Industrial Age. Whether it's during its days as the oil centre of the nation during the oil boom period of the 1930s, its days of manufacturing arms during World War II, or more recently as a real estate hotbed due to its ever-increasing population that makes it the third most popular city Facts, in the man. state of- I ain't too big into the real estate, you know, business. Obviously, I'm not a real estate expert, but people do know property's cheap here. People do move here for because it's affordable, place to raise a family good school systems you know what i'm saying so a lot of people buying property out here just because 
be affordable. I'm not positive on the market regardless of how it's being affected in current times. You know what I'm saying? Inflation and all that. But hey, uh, it's common knowledge, you know. Texas, the city has always been working. Getting an LLC for your business doesn't have to look like this. Just Google LLC Taylor Brands. It's totally easy. You pick. Well, it may be fair to say that all that work has come at a cost. Although the rest of the world has contributed to this phenomenon as well, Dallas has made its own considerable contribution to the hydrocarbon-based emissions that has poisoned the Earth's atmosphere Damn, so with toxic they're green saying gases we poison in the Earth. that forces the sun's hot energy to linger on in the planet. As the Earth's atmosphere swelters on and on, there is a worldwide scramble to curb this boiling heat that is predicted to suffocate all life on Earth. Okay. However, unlike the rest of the world who have taken the approach of limiting their carbon emission by battling the emissions released by motor vehicles and airplanes or by foregoing the use of fossil fuels to use alternative sources of energy like wind or solar energy to power their cities, Dallas has taken a different approach to tackle this hazardous problem and finally join the race to grow green. Cue in the Dallas 2030 district a public-private scheme that was initiated in 2003 Let's get to it. Let's get that is to keen it. to ensure that the city goes green by the end of 2030. However, rather than the methods being followed worldwide, Dallas has turned its attention to another source of the emissions that are contributing to the death of the planet, building. That's right. Bro, you know what's funny? When you drive into downtown Dallas, there's literally a smog over the city, bro. It's all this, these emissions, you know, top... I don't know, chemicals, toxins being released into the atmosphere. A lot of these things that contribute to, you know, the greenhouse effect, global warming. You know, I'm not I'm not a scientist, bro. I don't know all the details, but there's a common a common understanding, a general know-how. But with that, bro, you drive into Dallas, you drive into the inner city, there's literally darkness. And I, it, it rains more in the inner city, bro, because all them chemicals <laughs> forming in the sky and then everything, you know, starts raining is, you know precipitation all them words you learned back in elementary school that starts happening For example according to the energy information administration the building sector is responsible for consuming just under half of all the energy produced in the united states Taking of america all the energy though further to the fact that since 2011 it has been calculated that there will be a 12 percent increase in energy consumption in the following two decades 55 percent of this Solar. growth has been attributed to the building sector as such, according to the Dallas 2030 district, buildings and the construction activities, not vehicles or aeroplanes, are largely to blame for America's carbon emissions, almost as much as the other contributory factors combined. Consequently, the initiative has made the building's industry and its structures the focus of its reparative efforts. Going forward, the city of Dallas has set several goals that reduce the impact of the construction in the city. These goals are divided into two sections. Number one, existing buildings. As the city is not relatively new per se, there are a multitude of small and large buildings that exist in the many neighborhoods of the city. Since they can't all be raised to the ground, the initiative has set out the goal of limiting the energy use of such existing buildings by 20% below the national. So all I'm hearing is preserving energy, bruh. That's a natural initiative for the future, right? A lot of solar panels, you targets know. Targets of 50% energy efficiency by 2030. The same rates of reduction are expected to be achieved in terms of the use of water. New and renovated buildings and infrastructure. The initiative also takes into consideration the fact that construction of new buildings and infrastructure will occur after the city enters into the initiative. So, it made provisions for these new developments as well. Unlike the old buildings, however, the threshold is increased to a 60% reduction of energy use with the hope of reducing use of energy by as much as possible by the end of the decade. See, honestly, I thought they was going to go into specifics of maybe um, tech, um, architectural structures, buildings. I mean, they're kind of hitting on it, but what are we really seeing in the insanity of the future of dallas in 2030 man energy efficiency that's all i'm really getting to. that's the only understanding i'm really seeing at this point in time 
in respect of water use and transportation carbon monoxide emissions, it is expected that all new buildings and vehicles must immediately reduce their emissions by 50% below the city's average. All these electrical cars. While these measures may seem unattainable, it should be said that the initiative's recommendations are already being implemented. Dallas Environmental Quality Assistant Director Susan Alvarez has been quick to use the Dallas Omni Hotel as an example of a building that has gone green in accordance with the initiative. Huh? It was noticed that they achieved this by lighting the building with LED lights, uh -huh. painting with a special coat that reduces the heat caused by the sun, and by also converting all the rain that falls on the building into a cistern that will be recycled as toilet water. The iconic smart, Dallas Bank smart. of America building, which was constructed in 1986, and the Keystone. Bruh, rain that hit the Omni Hotel gets converted into toilet water. I like that idea. <laughs> I like that. The Creation Center have also carried out similar measures in order to meet the city's new building regulations. As such, you can imagine that the initiative has been met with positive reviews within the city. It's been reported that over 27 million square feet of land consisting of downtown Dallas, Uptown, the Design District and the Medical District have been dedicated to the scheme. Furthermore, it's also proven to be a popular concept to the rest of the country. It's even been reported that even President Joe Biden has acknowledged the goals of the initiative and has been noted to promote the reduction of carbon emissions by 50% throughout the entire nation and not just only the city of Dallas. As such, the only okay. way to go is up with this unorthodox approach. If truly this approach will cut down what the initiative considers the major contributor to climate change, the city may be acknowledged as an innovator of sorts among other cities in the world. And who knows, if they successfully combine the curb of carbon emission and energy use within the buildings Bro, everybody moving and to the Dallas. construction process with the control of the emissions produced by motor vehicles, airplanes and other fossil fuel powered machines, they may be among the first to actually achieve a city that maintains a zero emissions rate. At the very least, let's hope that these methods will indeed help save the planet from the harsh and hazardous effects of climate change. And with that, our video has come to an end. Be sure to- Bro, all they talked about was climate change. I thought they was gonna talk about some futuristic stuff, like, you know, like, I mean, they talked about buildings and, you know, fuel efficiency, but come on, bro. That is the insane city of Dallas in 2030. What do y'all think Dallas would be like in 20 years? I think it'll be just as developed as cities like New York, you know what I'm saying? Just in terms of the infrastructure. Um, let me know y'all's thoughts on that one in the comment section below, man. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit notification bell. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, forward, Fabian. It's the road to a million, man. Peace, love, prosperity. Till next time, we'll catch you guys in the next video. We out.